Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Now today we're gonna be talking about the most important, the main thing why you join an alliance in a Rise of Culture game, which is Treasure Hunt. As you see, Treasure Hunt today just started and I have this orange icon which shows me that I can go and fight off the pirates. So let's click on it. And the game will guide us to the treasure hunt. Now, treasure hunt consists of in total 60 battles. Now, what do you see here? You see on your top left there is this treasure hunt banner. It shows it ends in five days. And unlock level two, which means here you have compasses. I have accumulated some more because of the customizations. I will talk about them later with you. And uh, <coughs> You can donate compasses in here, just go to donate, click here, choose how many you like and you can invest those to unlock future levels of ADH. So basically each level consists of 20 encounters and if you finish all 60 of them, your alliance is going to be very happy and you're going to be competitive. Now, in order to get prizes from the treasure hunt at all, you have to do finish three or more encounters. This part. So, <clears throat> encounters look like this, and these small things which I'm showing you are the prizes you get after finishing every encounter. Here, on the bottom left, you have your ranking at the moment in your clan. It shows how much encounters you solved. As you see, I have one alliance member who already made 17 and so on and so on and now there is also a group where you can go in the alliance ranking and see who are you competing against and how much those alliances have done the encounters let's get on to the treasure hunt itself here you have the alliance chat and your gold and your diamonds and yeah let's begin so the first few encounters on the level one never battle because it's very easy to do negotiations now you always have a choice either to do a battle either to do this negotiation as you see negotiations uh, when they require like two three or four even they're very easy to do for goods i mean so at the moment negotiation is asking me about gold and food so let's try and negotiate so we click on negotiate and there we have these pirates and they need certain goods from you but you don't know which ones and you have three turns to guess the right good each one of them wants and therefore you can proceed further now these first are done very easily because what you're gonna do you will just put the gold on each one of those and press submit now as you see only one of them wanted gold and all the rest show red when the goods show red it disappear from the cluster of selection i can't choose it again because no one ever needs it anymore so now i have only food and i just click on the food and there we go submit and there we go we completed the first encounter congratulations now let's see what we got we got one research point and one alliance research point now let's continue the second one is also very easy because you have three turns and you have three goods so that means <clears throat> we'll go just the same way we'll put gold and as we see two of them wanted gold now we just put food as you see one of them wanted food and now we put these doors and there we go another encounter completed now the chest gave us 180 peppers and Alliance City research points. Now third encounter as well, very, very easy. You just go by negotiate. You can start with the food, no matter. Just go food. <coughs> you see food. Yep. So now we go gold, for example, and the last one, just the door. So. There we have it, we had some food and some Alliance City research points. Now every time your Alliance hits a certain bar in the encounters amount, you get these chests. 
these chests can have many things and in this particular case I got the replenishment for my archer barracks and now <clears throat> since my alliance done all in total 45 encounters I can open the next one and here I have that was for the heavy infantry refilling now you can always click on the chest and see the percentage chances of what you're gonna get like here I can get uh, Peace for a fire fortress, <clears throat> customization, which is improving cavalry boost damage. Now this one replenishes all the barracks you have, <clears throat> and this one will be uh, like a random something replenishment. So uh, this is how I got these archers and heavy infantry, and it also can give you five compasses. Now compasses are essential to proceed. Let's continue. You see here are the four goods, but I will still try to negotiate because it would still be easy to do, not as easy as when there are three, but let's check it out. I usually go like this, for example, and let's see what it gives us. So as you see, no one wants a door, no one wants a knight. And we got a gold and food orange, that means someone else needs them. So, and we have two turns and two goods left. So we just put food where we can, now here and here, and gold here. And as we see, nope, no food there, so that means also gold. And now we just click on the gold, submit, and we won another negotiation. And now these are the boss battles, when you see uh, <clears throat> somebody standing on your encounter, that is the boss encounter. And this guy's Lago, he's very easy to do. I usually always do battles on the boss encounters because uh, boss encounters always require you RP points to negotiate and uh, those RP points are quite essential to your progress and you don't want to waste them here. <clears throat> About the customizations I needed to tell you that the top one, you get it exactly from Alliance Treasure Hunt as well is the Kraus Inn. Now this Kraus Inn <clears throat> gives you three research points per day and two compasses. Now what's best about this customization is that this customization also applies you the compasses even if the Alliance Treasure Hunt is over. So if you put it on active and Alliance Treasure Hunt is done you will still accumulate compasses and you will start something like me when I had now 12 compasses at the beginning you can even have more if you have more crowds in available at the time if you have four at the time you will probably start with a 20 plus compasses <clears throat> the next alliance treasure so, hunt Ro Colossus of Rodas gives me a compass per day which is very very nice and let's fight the boss battle Now these boss battles are very very easy, first of all because this is level 1 and even on the level 3 the placement here is always the same, basically you just put your, no not this one, uh, we put archers, we put infantry and I usually use horses because they're stronger than the heavy infantry, heavy infantry their main idea is to block enemy horsemen from reaching your archers. Of course they can be powerful and we talked about it through the wonders, my wonders video, but in this particular case I like the horses. So now let's see how that goes. I use commanders, standard commanders, which are Queen Hochul. Hochul. <laughs> so she is probably the best. The Jaguars are extremely powerful now Spartans are good also because they're like infantry and just you get more troops and King Minos summons your uh, his horsemen to aid you in the battle so let's return and click the battle now you want to summon these Jaguars so that they would show up and help your infantry or archers it basically doesn't matter because as you see I summon them and some of them went to the archers, some of them went 
to the <clears throat> infantry fighting and just summon the horses to aid with the boss so as you see quick boss is down we are the winners we lost some horses lost some troops but it's okay and the chest is ours 15 diamonds not bad so let's resume what do we have here and again we have four goods required so we will go and try and negotiate again now there we have it we need doors and gold so what I'm gonna do I will put doors here and here and gold here and we will see okay that's a miss and a food or the gold and as you see I'm going for the gold but now it's a gold and now you can happen to have this situation and you can choose to waste one compass if you stab it or you spend some gems just for the sake of this video I will spend one gem to fix that and now as you see we go for food here and now as you see we have one and there we go so <clears throat> uh, let's continue with the next one just the same way just go like this and now when this happens this is basically very very bad because it's very hard to guess where you need something and we'll just try to go random and we'll try to see what happens so as you see doors here doors here doors here that means the doors go only here and now we need to put the food somewhere so food has been in all three of these but not here that means it goes here so now we have food <clears throat> and the doors and now we need to put the gold here and here so it was screwed up i would have to spend some diamonds here but you can just don't do it i can just show you how to do the battle now when you fail a negotiation you of course lose a compass so i'll go to my city to replenish my troops now we are on the next encounter here and i promise to show you the battle now let's go into the battle and just see what it has for us now this layout is not the very best that's why i i mean this place where you can put your troops so that's why i usually say that it's better to try and do negotiations with the four goods in here rather than trying battling these fellas but still it's very very easy it's just it has cavalry and you have to put your archers adjusted so that the cavalry goes for the infantry and not for the archers and that's it so let's start the battle as you see all the cavalry is occupied by my warriors and then in this battle it doesn't matter where you summon your troops just be sure to summon them so you lose as less as possible of yours and there we have it we just won this battle so level one is all like this it's very very easy but you will need to replenish your troops after every battle you play that's why negotiations are faster and way more easier than the battles but you can't do all lower negotiations unless you want to spend money so you would need to do the battles especially level two level three where you will have negotiations of eight goods and nine goods and there's just too much and uh, it's no point to spend your diamonds even on the negotiation that so now let's get on with the next battle now what i did not tell you these chests what you earn together with your alliance members you better do not open until you get rid of your compasses and why because for example now i'm overstacked i have seven of four max possible which means they do not accumulate and i waste time but these chests can give me like five more and so i would better open them <clears throat> only when i'm out of these 
because even if it will give me those five, I will quickly spend one, two, and then it will go here on the count until I get my next one, because one of them is replenished by one and a half hour, so you need to spend them as fast as possible so you start accumulating new. Now, let's get on with the next battle. Now, this battle will be <clears throat> a lot easier because you have a better placement here. So what you want to do, because it has a cavalry, you would put your infantry and one infantry behind. There is no point in using heavy infantry here and uh, no point in any different uh, placement because this is level 1 and these battles are easy, you're gonna win it anyway. So what you need is this. Two archers, three infantry, that's it. Now let's see how it goes for us. Now, you would want to summon your jaguars and stuff to fight off the archers here. Because archers do the most damage and you will just, as you see, quickly eliminate them. And the battle is won in seconds after that. So, very easy to do. We lost some infantry, but it's okay. <laughs> And we're gonna replenish it. So now these chests you have to open all the time, so it also can give you uh, compasses, but it's okay because you don't have actually a choice unless you open these chests. You cannot proceed to the next encounter with the next battle. Now, here again, we have these five goods negotiations, but we're gonna do battle. Let's go into battle and we'll see. That this one is also basically easy, but has a trick here because you have enemy cavalry on the left and on the right of your battlefield. So now <clears throat> what you need to do is to put your infantry, your heavy infantry and your archers like this here. Okay. Uh, I'm playing it through the computer and on computer we have a bit of lag sometimes like this. So I also have these Mayan arches. You can just skip on using them. I will call them back just for the sake of this video. So this is the placement you want because you need heavy cover this heavy infantry to block the enemy cavalry. And now let's see how that plays out. <coughs> As you see, the cavalry did not reach uh, your archers and I've sent some jaguars mistakenly wrong but it's okay because I have two more troops to summon which block the archers. <clears throat> so now we've done one more battle and we again return to the next one after we open the chest. Turn to the last battle of this video. I will make a level one with the 10 first encounters in one video and then we will make more videos showing off the next because the further we go the harder it was gonna get to special level three and there you will need a video for each battle just to show you how it's done it's not so hard it's just about the placement and the proper summoning of your commanders that's it so now let's get on to the fighting and as you see now already on level one uh, second boss encounter on encounter 10 requires six goods to negotiate which is pointless to try because you can get lucky of course and most of them will get right on the first turn and um, you will just get like a guess it correctly on the second and third but First of all, it asks for RP, you can ask for RP points, research points here, uh, which are very valuable, so don't spend them here. And also six goods will definitely ask you to spend your diamonds for more moves. So uh, one extra move costs 35 diamonds, which is kind of high pricing, so better save your diamonds for something more useful <clears throat> when you actually can do battles. Battles are like almost always 100% you're going to complete them. I will show you tips and tricks on the level 3, when in the, uh, you have two wave battles and on the second wave battle you might lose <coughs> all of your troops except for archers and you're still gonna win only with the archers and proper summoning of commanders. Now, <clears throat> okay, let's just talk about this battle at hand and then we'll move on about the rest in the next videos. Now here as you see you have cavalry left right, you have archers, have the boss here which shoots 
and you have a little bit of infantry so <clears throat> what you want to do here is you summon your infantry here it will be busy with this cavalry for a short amount of time now you summon one more this one will block the infantry here and the third one so you can of course do it different way but this is level one and as i say you will always win these battles anyway uh the placement matters more on the levels two and three so i put one more infantry here because cavalry's idea is that they pass the first line always unless it's heavy infantry and they're trying to hit what's on the back and if we put on their way on the second row our infantry they will go just after it not our archers they're not really smart actually they just go for whatever there is on the second row so this is the placement you want to win this battle and now let's start it and we'll see how it goes now let's summon the jaguars and we will summon them somewhere there to eat up the enemy uh archers oh, sorry i have a bit of lags here i summoned the spartans wrong but it's okay so basically <clears throat> that's how you do it my cavalry finished off the archers here my jaguars made the most against archers here now the problem why my jaguars did not succeed is that because here was the wall and uh, your troops are not really smart and they are distracted uh, by walls so if a wall stands they will attack a wall instead of troops even if those those troops are archers and your troops will die from archers but um, still your troops are gonna fight the wall instead of the archers which is ridiculous but it's the way it is and if you use the commander that summons the walls you can actually use that against your enemies but keep in mind that your walls are not as strong as the enemy ones here now as you see we won the battle just like i told you okay we lost some infantry but they repellish quite fast and we just put press continue and there you have it the chest for the 10th encounter we have a puzzle piece and a lion city research point so now i will go to repellish my troops now thank you for watching this first video of the alliance treasure hunt and uh, i hope it helps you i hope it helps you out with your battles with your negotiations in the future and I'll see you soon in the next video.